Hey there, artist types. Have you ever been walking around in the open world that we call life and seen an object that has a really interesting form that you said, I would just love to utilize that in my sculpts on Adobe Medium? Today, I'm gonna to show you how to do that. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the Prodigia Games video channel. My name is Gareth, and today it's tutorial time again. So what we're gonna be talking about today is the process of taking physical objects and digitizing them so that you can put them in your game as art assets, or in this case, as presets for your sculpting in Adobe Medium. So the way that this works is through a process called photogrammetry. And what this involves is just taking pictures of the object, which even if you're only using your smartphone camera is fine, and then you run it through software, and uh, then that'll give you your 3D mesh to work with. Now, the good thing about this process is I wanted to make the bar as low as possible to get as many people the ability to do this as we can. So both of the pieces of software that I'm gonna be using are first of all free, which is good, and also don't require an active internet connection, which for some people can be a problem. So uh, really, I've tried to make it as accessible as possible, and we'll walk through kind of the basics of how to do it. The one caveat that I have is that you do have to have a GPU that has uh, CUDA cores enabled. So basically you're looking at uh, NVIDIA GTX cards or later. Um, I, I know the 10 series onward are all good. Uh, before that, you'd have to check compatibility on some of the older cards. But other than that, you're all set to go and there's no reason not to try it. So to summarize the process, what happens is, first of all, you take your photos of your object of many different angles and you run it into the photogrammetry software. That creates a dense 3D mesh that will allow you to take it into your 3D modeling program of choice, in my case, Blender, and clean it up a little bit, isolate it so that you can get just the shape of the object you want. From there, once you export that, it's a really simple process of just importing the right format into Adobe Medium, and voila, you have your ability to sculpt. So for a quick rundown of the software that you're gonna to need to use for this, uh, the first one's going to be Meshroom by Alice Vision. This is completely free and it's uh, kind of a standard photogrammetry software. Uh, I haven't used any others, so I can't really speak to them, but uh, a lot of them do require an internet connection because they do some server side processing. So um, if you have something else that you use, then that's fine, but this is just what I've worked with. And then the other program is going to be Blender, which is, uh, I mean, if you know anything about 3D graphics, you've at least heard of it if not used it. So I would definitely recommend giving it a try. Um, if you're new to 3D graphics, it's a great way to start because again, it's completely free. So check those out and uh, let's go ahead and move on to the next step of the process. All right, so let's go ahead and get rolling with the first part, which is dealing with Meshroom. So what you can do is go ahead and open up the program and then just directly from the folder that you have all the images saved in, just go ahead and drop them right onto the, uh, the file window on the left side of the interface that you can see right there. Now, basically there's a lot of settings that you can deal with in this and those windows at the bottom that you see all the little boxes, it works a lot like kind of a node based system and each of those is part of the process of how it processes the images. But in this case, we're just gonna go with the basics, keep everything at default and just go ahead and go up and hit the start button. Now it's gonna take a long time. Um, I will tell you that it depends on your system, but in my case, usually what I'll do is just get it started and then go to bed, really. Um, and then when you get up in the morning, what you have is this model. It's a, uh, uh, this is the dense cloud of different points and pixels that it's tracked, all its magic that it does. And then after that, you can go ahead and load in the model and that's when you can see what you're actually working with. So that model, everything is already saved. You don't have to export anything. Uh, and that means you can go ahead and move on to the next point, which is going into Blender to clean it up. All right, so when you go to import your file into Blender, the biggest question you might ask yourself is, where is this file actually saved? Because it doesn't really tell you, it's very kind of vague, but if you go where you've saved your Meshroom um, file, then now there will be a folder that's generated with that same name. So in my case, it was log, and uh, so now it has a log folder in there. And you go in there and it's you, kind of a cascade of folders. All the different processes have their own folder attached to them. What you're looking for is the texturing folder because that's the one that has the actual mesh in it. So go in the texturing folder, then there's gonna be a string of 
crazy numbers and letters with the folder in there. Um, I assume that's something to do with kind of a hash that it uses. And then once you go into that folder, there you'll see the, uh, the textured mesh file. Um, what you're looking for is a .obj, which is a wavefront object file. And go ahead and navigate to that in your Blender under the import obj option. And what you'll get there is your file directly into Blender. Um, now it's gonna be big. Uh, I believe this one's just over 1.5 million polygons. And uh, so that's why we have to kind of clean it up. But what you can basically do, if you're not familiar with Blender, uh, I can understand it being a little daunting, but uh, what I've done here, for example, is just uh, first cleaned up the area around the log and then kind of refined just using boxes and Boolean modifiers on the mesh itself, pulled all that junk off, and then I have just the log itself. Um, it's pretty straightforward. If you don't know how to do it, it's kind of outside of the scope of me to explain everything about how to work with files in Blender, but definitely something I would recommend you look into if you're talking about creating custom stamps or any kind of 3D design. So once you've got the mesh all cleaned up, what you can do is go ahead and add a decimate modifier. What I did with, with mine was add a 20%, which is 0.2 on the little slider there. And that'll just cut down on a lot of the excess polygons. So it just gives you a little bit of a cleaner and less intensive mesh to work with. All right, and so once you've got that isolated, everything's good there, just go ahead and go up to, in the same place where you imported the OBJ, just go to export OBJ file now. And we're gonna go ahead and leave all the settings default. I don't wanna make it any more complicated than it has to be. Um, again, all of these steps, there's a lot of nuance, there's a whole discipline of all these different things, but we're gonna go ahead and just export it as default, just give it a name and put it somewhere that you know you're gonna be able to find it easily. And then we can move on to the next step, which is bringing it into Adobe Medium. So the last step is just to import it into Medium, which is really straightforward. All you gotta do is go into the program and where you open up the window to select your stamp, then at the bottom, you'll see a file thing that says add stamp. And what you can do is just navigate to where you saved your OBJ file and bring it in. And then once your stamp is imported, you can just go ahead and it'll be automatically selected by default, but you can go into the custom window and it'll be there saved for you as well. So from there, you can just use it as you want. Uh, in this case, it's kind of a detailed one, so you gotta bring up the resolution, but uh, I'm gonna assume that you know basically what you're doing with Medium, so you will know kind of what, what level of definition you need for your particular stamps and stuff. So um, really, I know this has kind of been an overview, but uh, it's just a, a start to the process that I think a lot of people don't necessarily have off the bat. And um, in the future, if there's good demand, I would definitely consider doing something a little more in depth about each step of this process. But uh, for now, I just wanted to keep it brief, keep it snappy and make sure that everybody could kind of ex get involved with this at the base level. So um, hopefully this has been helpful and I would love to see what you make with this process and how the community can kind of use this to level up their skills as a whole. So uh, definitely very exciting, but uh, I will take off for now and uh, I hope to see you around here in the future. So if you're getting good value out of this, don't hesitate to hit the like button and uh, I would be honored to have you here as a subscriber. Uh, the comment section is always open to suggestions, questions, anything like that. So I hope to see you around in the future and until then, keep being awesome and making awesome art.